We are broadcasting here live from New York City. My name is Matthew Kroll. I work here for Kaplan Nursing, and I want to welcome all of you today for joining us with the uh, for our Life as a Nurse opening ceremony as part of our, our Nurses Week here at Kaplan. We have a really exciting panel of nurses, and I cannot wait to introduce you to the two folks that we have on our panel today. But before we do that, I just wanted to remind everybody of a couple of things. First of all, I want to give a special thank, uh, thank you and shout out to allnurses.com for sponsoring our event today. If you have not checked them out, I definitely encourage you to do so when you get the chance. Not during this broadcast, though. Uh, if you actually see in the, the description below, you'll see the link that goes right to allnurses.com. And again, I want to spend a, send a special thank, out, uh, thank you to all of those who, uh, who did help us to put this event together today. I also wanted to remind everyone that we are live, as I said, as hello, I'm here from live from New York City. And because of that, we're going to be taking live questions from all of you. Any questions that you have during this conversation, even as you're listening in now, that you might have for our panelists of nurses, feel free to, to have those keep those coming in. You can put them right into the YouTube chat, uh, just as you see to the below, below you, to the right, depending on what your screen looks like right now. And you can also tweet us on Twitter. You can follow us at Kaplan NCLEX. And if you use the hashtag Kaplan Nurses Week, we will be getting to as many questions as we possibly can. Can't promise we'll get to all of them, but we will definitely get to as many of those questions you have. So feel free to keep them coming on in. And the last reminder I do have is that we are streaming on multiple platforms. And I want to thank all of those watching from YouTube or from allnurses.com or from any other place. And if you click on the setting button, it looks like a little widget, if you can feel free to go ahead and upgrade your settings to HD or whatever else to make sure that your viewing experience is as wonderful as possible. I think I've done enough talking, so I want to turn it over to our panelists, which is why you are really here today. So the first person I would like to introduce is a Kaplan nursing faculty member, and that is Rhonda Laws. So hello, Rhonda, and thank hello. you for joining us today. How are you? Good. Wonderful. Great to have you here. And the other person I would like to introduce is Nurse Beth Hawks, who many of you may know as Nurse Beth over at allnurses.com. And we are incredibly honored to have her here with us today. So hello, Beth. Nice to see you. Hi there. So uh, as nice I said, to be here. Yes, so we are we are really happy to have you here. So and I think that your reputation certainly precedes you. I mean, there's definitely uh, as I've been as I've been meeting and learning more about you. There's just a lot of excitement over you and Rhonda as well as just uh, through through everything that you've all you've both done. Uh, we really it's a pleasure to have you here. So for those of uh, for those of you watching at home, we want to know who you are as well. So if you want to put into the the chat in the YouTube chat or on Twitter, let us know. Who you are? Are you a nursing student? Are you a nurse educator? Are you just someone who is interested in the nursing profession, or are you a nurse yourself? We want to know who you are, where you're watching from, and again, it's great to have you all here. So let's get to learn a little bit more about our panelists. And I'm going to start out with Rhonda. As I said, nice to have you here. And why don't you tell the folks at home who may not know who you are a little bit about yourself? Well, thank you. Hey, I'm a nurse, obviously, is why we're here tonight. My background is in critical care, um, and I've been a nurse manager, and then I transitioned to a faculty role. So that's kind of been my career in a nutshell, but I'm also, more importantly, a student myself. So I went back to school, and I'm finishing up my doctorate in um, educational psychology. So I'm fascinated by how your brain works, how you study, how you retain things, how you can draw those back when you're on something like a test. So that's what I'm most fascinated with. And then thirdly, my other role is I teach Kaplan NCLEX reviews because I, as a brand new faculty 11 years ago, I heard faculty saying, you know, listen up, this could be on the NCLEX, and I thought somehow I had missed a memo. So I um, sought out Kaplan and started teaching for them so I could help students because it seems like I know it was for me, but I seem that testing is the most stressful part of nursing school. So that's pretty much me in the background. Great. Well, again, great to have you here. And I also want to say I love that skeleton behind you. It's <laughs> a great piece of decor. <laughs> we use them a lot in the, yeah, with students. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, so, yeah, great to have you here, as I said. And, uh, of course, our other panelist, as I said, is Nurse Beth. So, again, Beth, great to have you here. And why don't you tell, I, I feel like a lot of students already know who you are, but uh, why don't you tell the folks at home a little bit about yourself? For those who may not know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was listening to Rhonda, and I just, it's remarkable to me how many different things you can do as a nurse. And I, like her, I've done a lot of different things. Um, I'm in acute care, so I've been in um, the hospital setting my entire career um, in many different 
nursing units. I've been in ICU and orthopedics and med surge, and I've been in management and informatics, and now I'm in staff development. So I'm an, in education, which is uh, I'm a med surge educator, and um, part of what I love about what I'm doing now is I get to work with the new grads a lot, help to onboard them, and support and encourage them, and. Um, it's just wonderful twice a year when we get all of our new grads and they're just learning how to become nurses and we get to help them and support them. Great. Well, that's wonderful. I know we're going to get to know both of you a bit more as we chat about what it's like to be a nurse. Um, but again, keep those questions coming. Uh, everyone who's watching at home, send us your questions on Twitter or in the YouTube chats. We're going to get to as many as we possibly can. But I want to start by actually asking a, a couple of questions just to get us started here. And I'm going to direct my first question to uh, both of you. Maybe, maybe I'll go to Beth first. Uh, so, Beth, I... I, I've heard just in speaking with a lot of different nursing students and, uh, and nurses out there that there's always there always seems to be some story as to what first uh, brought you into the nursing world, what inspired you. So I want to know that exact question. What inspired you, Nurse Beth, to become a nurse? Um, that's a good question. I was I was in my mid twenties and I was working at a hospital. I was working on the switchboard, so I was a switchboard operator. And I would do things like page respiratory therapy, respiratory therapy, stat, and so on. And um, and I was kind of watching all the busyness go on all around me, people coming into the lobby and going into the emergency room. And I was really intrigued by the stories and what was going on. And, and I remember sitting in the cafeteria by myself, um, eating dinner one night. And at the same table at the other end were several nurses from the emergency room. And they were talking about their work and what had been going on. And it sounded so exciting and I wanted to be a part of that. Um, I knew that going into nursing would be challenging and to me that was also a positive, a positive thing that I knew it was going to take commitment and challenge. And I also think that I ended up choosing nursing because I'm a nurturing person and as a nurse I care I care about people and I I get a lot of um, I get a lot of satisfaction and gratification out of helping people. So being a nurse was really a natural fit for me. That's great. And uh, as you mentioned caring, I've I've really seen that nurses are one of the, the you know, the most caring professions, if not the most caring profession. Uh, everybody just really has this passion for what they do, and I, I admire that so much. So uh, thank you for sharing that story. And uh, how about you, Rhonda? I mean, was it, was it similar for you, or did you, did you have any – what was your inspiration to become a nurse? Well, you know, ever since I was a little girl, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to go into nursing, and I, I – agree with Beth in saying that if your temperament is you want to care for people and as I um, as I progress and I thought through different things that I wanted to do and going to college I'm a first generation college student so this was all new in my world to be the first time to go to college and I've never regretted nursing I can honestly say that there are days you are tired there are days you might be a little discouraged but I've never regretted it and also there are so many things that you can do in nursing it's not just what people used to think it's all different environments and places that you can do nursing you can teach you can all kinds of things there's a wide variety of opportunities are available so I'm blessed that um, I I'm thankful that I knew that's what I always wanted to do because I have a hard time making a decision about what I want to order for dinner. So <laughs> those decisions are usually really rough for me. So knowing that that's what I always want to do, but I have also never regretted doing it. Well, that's great. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's great to hear both of your stories. And we want to know, for those of you watching at home, for those of you who are nurses or, as I said, nurse educators or nursing students who are watching, what, in, what first inspired you to become a nurse? We want to keep that conversation going, so let us know if you are not in the nursing world, what inspires you the most about the nursing profession? So share your thoughts and comments and ideas on, on Twitter or in the YouTube chat below. And just to get to keep the conversation going, uh, Rhonda, to change gears a little bit, uh, what I want to know from you is, because you talk about being a student, and that you you know you yourself are, are constantly learning, which is great. And going back to uh, going back to nursing school, what was the most challenging thing for you? Well, when I went through my undergrad for nursing school, I think the most challenging thing was clearly the exams because I remember after taking my first nursing school exam, I thought, 
what was that? I mean, I, don't, I think I have the wrong textbook. I Something went drastically wrong because the amount of time and effort I put into studying and the result that I saw in my grade did not line up. There was definitely some cognitive dissonance there to say the least. So I think um, for me, learning that nursing is a different kind of science. It's an applied science. And so that was really challenging. And when I've gone back to school now as an adult for my doctorate, and I think most nursing students can relate to this, it's the juggling. It's the balancing of a job and school and family responsibilities and always feeling like wherever I am, I should be someplace else. If I'm studying, I should be with family. If I'm with family, I should be at work. It's all those that juggling. I think that can be the biggest mm -hmm. challenge for that. So it's a it's a mindset switch to nursing school, and I'm sure people can relate. You start off, just like I did in my doctorate, that I'm going to get a 4.0, and then you realize, I just want to finish. I just <laughs> want to finish. And so you kind of change you got to change your perspective and think that it's about me becoming a good nurse, someone who can think critically, someone who can intersect people at a time when they most need me and that I can make a difference. Whether I, I might not be able to change, obviously, your outcome, but I can sure walk with you through that till we get there. Yeah, and you bring up that point about having to, to juggle uh, life and work and family, and I know that when I've spoken to nurses and nursing students, they, they have that exact same concern, and we're going to talk about some of the, the concerns that uh, a lot of nursing students uh, and nurses out there do have. Uh, Beth, was it the same experience for you in nursing school? Was it the, were, were the exams the most challenging parts, or was it something completely different? It was chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah, definitely chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> that was Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, it was it was a life point because all up until then, from grade school all the way up to college, I I really had I hadn't failed at anything, and if I put my mind to it, I I could do it, pass the test, get a good grade, and so on. And so when I took chemistry, and I don't remember if I failed my first test, but I just didn't get it. I it just I didn't want to get it. I didn't get it. It was very difficult for me. And that was, um, I really had to almost stand back and look at myself. I was young, and it was it was one of my first failures. And so in a way, that was good for me as, as a growth period. And nursing has helped me to grow so much ever since. And that was one of the first times. Um, so that was difficult. I, by the way, I ended up um, getting an A in that class. Well, that's good. I was, <laughs> I was determined, and and what I always tell nurses and new nurses is, I one thing I know for sure, just the fact that you got your RN and you got through school, you are determined. That I know. Or nurses have to be smart to get through school, but I think even more than that, it's the determination. We all have that in common. So I did end up, uh, you know, doing well in the class. I also remember waking up at night at two o'clock in the morning with chemistry equations going through my head and I worked all night long and dreamt about it and and so on. Um, I would I would say uh, I agree with Rhonda. I think the juggling. Um, I love going to school and I went back for my uh, bachelor's. Well, I started out as the LVN. Then I got my RN, my ADN, and then I got my bachelor's. And then I was in management and then I went back for a master's degree and on all the while I was raising three children. Wow. So it it's a lot of yes, juggling and trying to um, be the best you can it, in the different roles that you have, you know, as a mother, as a nurse, as a manager. Um, but very rewarding. But I think um, it's not just nurses that have it. That's women juggle. <laughs> I do think. And men too, but I do think women juggle maybe a little bit more. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And uh, yeah, so it sounds like you have a lot of the, the similar experiences as far as juggling the different mm -hmm. uh, responsibilities in your life, and it definitely takes a lot of commitments to be a nurse. We, we I think a lot of us uh, out there know that, and I don't want to share what, what my chemistry uh, my chemistry grade was. I don't think I did. That was probably my, my least favorite class as well, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> I did not get an A in that class. But, um, but I, yeah, go ahead. I, I want to say too that um, I remember when I was going to school and, and I felt uh, I love being in school. I'm one of those people I just love being in school and I went back for my master's and I remember you, when you go back to school it's the time comes from somewhere. You can't be everywhere all the time. But being in school is temporary and I knew when I was getting my 
degree, that I was also role modeling for my children the value of education because it's your actions. And so I knew that it would be over, that I would have my degree, and they would know that that's a really important thing to do. Yeah, that's so. a great point. Definitely to be a role model mm -hmm. for, your, for your children and to, uh, mm -hmm. and especially an inspiration to any nursing student watching right now. It's a great, great thing. So I want to actually uh, take us out of the, the nursing student world for a minute, and I'll pose this question to both of you. Uh, what do you remember about your first day on the job as a nurse? I mean, you, you, you go through school, you, you take the NCLEX, you pass the NCLEX, and now you're, you're applying to, to different jobs, so hopefully you have a job lined up, and now you're, it's, it's your first day as a, as a real licensed nurse. What was that experience like for you? Did it meet your expectations? Was it, was it different? What was that like? I was excited to be on my own. I was, I was ready. I wanted to be on my own. I was looking forward to it. Um, when you take your first job, you're in orientation for a while, and uh, you have a preceptor, and uh, or maybe more than one preceptor, for a while, several weeks. Now it's really turned into two or three months. Um, and I remember that I was definitely uh, wanting to get on my, be on my own, and just do it. So it's kind of a mixture of being excited and terrified at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that. Rhonda, how about you? What was that first day like? Um, the first day, I remember walking into a patient's room who was a trauma patient, and I knew absolutely you know, nothing. You're so brand new oh, no. to it. And he had pelvic traction, and I remember them just kind of walking me through on a tour. And He had pelvic traction, and he had beta-9 ointment around each pin, and he was on the ventilator. And my eyes were just about this big, and I remember thinking, Dear Lord, please, anyone but that patient, because I was just sure that was his guts coming out from around the pin uh, and all those things. So that was my first exposure as an extern. But um, I learned so much through that that um, that's kind of how nursing is. You learn quickly that um, what are the basics? How do you keep this patient safe? And you know you've always got team members and physicians, and you're on a team that you can problem solve to you know the right thing to do. The most important thing is ask. Don't be afraid to say, I'm over my head here. I need to, I don't understand this, or I need help. And man orientation is the best way to do that. And a lot of hospitals are doing that great mm -hmm. with the, you know, with the extra long programs that they have and giving the opportunity to get your feet under you. Because best sounds much more brave than I was. I was scared to death. It took me a while to really do that, but I highly recommend you getting the chance, if you can, to do an externship or getting out there. Beth had experience in the hospital before she got in, and that's invaluable to you. So make sure, if you can, to get as much experience in the hospital as an extern or a preceptorship so you can really kind of get your feet under you and get, that invite, get used to that environment in that type of setting. Well, definitely great advice, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I would do if that were my, my first patient, <laughs> but uh, it's, it sounds like you, you handled everything really well, and it looks like we are getting some questions coming in, so I'm going to, I'm just on my iPad right now, and I'm going to transition over to just take some of these questions, and for those of you who are uh, watching or just tuning in for the, the first time, if you're a little bit late, that's fine, just want to let you know that we are taking questions live on the air, uh, you are watching me live, hello from New York City, and you can uh, either type your questions into the YouTube chat below. If you're on allnurses.com, you can type your questions into the, the, uh, the, the page right there. Or if you are on Twitter, if you have a, a Twitter account, you can tweet us at Kaplan NCLEX or use hashtag Kaplan Nurses Week, and we'll get to as many questions as we possibly can. But uh, one of the first questions which I will pose to either one of you is um, also talking about being a, a new nurse, entering the nursing world. What is the biggest mistake? which you see new nurses make? I'll pose this to either one of you. Okay. Oh my goodness. I think being too hard on themselves. You know, nobody expects you when you first get out of school to, um, to have experience because by definition you don't. And you, it's a big mistake to compare yourself to nurses that do have experience. Um, also, you need to give yourself enough time. Um, nurses somehow seem to think that they should be uh, up and running or at a certain place or able to handle a full load in a short amount of time. That is not true. It will take you about a year. It will take you about a year at least to get up to speed. Um, it will take you two years to feel really confident and up to speed. So give yourself the time because every other nurse 
went through that as well. Do not be too hard on yourself and don't give up too soon. It's too, I see some nurses who become discouraged at the one month and two month and three months mark and that's too soon to evaluate a career. You don't have enough um, good and bad experiences yet to, you know, to make a decision. So give yourself time, be good to yourself, be patient with yourself, believe in yourself, you can do it. You've made it through school that was extremely difficult. You can also become the great nurse that you're meant to be. Well, that's great advice. Thank you very much. Rhonda, how about you? I mean, what do you see the, the same mistakes? Is it just nurses being uh, hard on themselves, not giving themselves enough time? Is there anything else that you see? Boy, they, they sure can be, and I, I to best statement about people giving up too soon, there's a great theorist out there talking about there's also a really vulnerable time about four to six months, and that's when people really crash and burn. You, you start out feeling and you can kind of build, and then they're, they're really finding four to six months is another time. So I would take to heart what Beth said as far as you're normal. Everyone feels that way. You're not the only one who feels like this is overwhelming or what did I get myself into. And I would also take a look at the other end of the spectrum. Um, I, I would take a student who's hard on themselves any day over someone who thinks they are all that and more. So I go in knowing that there are, you have colleagues who are experts. Use them, tap into them, and don't be afraid to ask questions for whatever reason. But remember that there's people there ahead of you that are experts. So use their expertise mm -hmm. and ask. Don't think that you know. Don't be afraid to look like you don't know because it's mm -hmm. always about taking care of our patients first. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you. That's a, and that's a great question. As I said, keep, definitely keep those questions coming. Uh, looking at a, a couple of other questions here, actually, uh, for those, I guess, that we might be uh, you know, inspiring or those who are out there thinking about entering the nursing world. Um, what advice would you have to those students? I'll, I'll direct this actually to Rhonda first. Um, what advice would you have to those trying to decide whether to go for an, um, an RN or an LVN degree? I mean, what are some of the, the, the differences, similarities there, and uh, what, what, would you, what advice would you offer when they're actually trying to decide which of those two degrees to pursue? Oh, that's a great question. Between LVN or an RN degree? Correct, yes. Yeah, you really need to look at where you are in your life. What's accessible to you? What time do you have available? You're going to invest a lot of time and energy in an LVN degree just like you will in an RN degree. And I think that sometimes is a great pathway for people if you know that your end goal is to be an RN, you may want to start with that, or your end goal may be to be an LVN. And that's great because we, we need all types of nurses. We're all colleagues and all important. So the things I would kind of take into place are um, what time do you have available? What are the programs that are local in your area? Uh, what type of financial resources do you have to do that? And then what makes sense to you? Is there an associate's degree program or a bachelor's degree program? Which level do you want to do in that type of degree program? And there are a lot of resources out there for going back to school. We need nurses, and there's a lot of amazing programs that can help you reach that goal, whatever level you want to be at, LVN or RN. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Beth, do you have, this, you have similar advice or would you tell those students anything else in addition to that? Yeah, I would say get your RN. And, and it's because um, if there's any chance that you are going to want to get your RN, and I assume if you're asking the question, you there might be a chance, it's a much more direct path. You're going to spend uh, a longer time going to LVN and then to RN route. I think the RNs definitely have more career options and um, I, I know a lot of LVNs that become discouraged because they are not able to work in the setting they prefer such as acute care. It's difficult for an LVN to get a job in acute care now. So um, now I was an LVN so I, I do know the LVN program and the RN program. I was the LVN first but I graduated in December and in January, I was back in anatomy and physiology class to take huh. a couple of prereqs I still needed for my RN. went straight into the RN. But at that time in my life, like Rhonda said, I needed a job. I had three small children, and it was purely economic. I had to work while I put myself through RN school. If you have the choice, get your RN. That's my advice. Well, that's, that's great advice, and both—I mean, both of your points are, are, are spot on. So thank oh, you so much. And Matt, could yeah, we add on. one thing to that too? Yes. 
If you do get your LVN, there's bridge programs mm -hmm. that in two semesters you can have your RN degree too. So that may be one option for you that you want to you want to look at because you don't have to take another several years of school. You can do it in just two more semesters after you have your LVN degree. Well. That that works too. So <laughs> uh, we have. We're, I'm looking here. I mean, there's there's other there's definitely other questions coming in. Uh, there's one from Hannah Wren on Twitter uh, at bananas12, which asks, uh, "What's the scariest part about nursing school?" Rhonda, I'll let you take that one. I think I know you said the exams, but what is the scariest part? Is it the exams or is it something else? Uh, well, I, I love what Beth said about chemistry because I remember we had a <laughs> chemistry prof who did not like nursing students. He only liked med students. So he took great pleasure in throwing us up in front of the board and making us draw molecules, which would break me up into a cold sweat. So I definitely agree with Beth on that. But I, I, for me, the hardest part of nursing school was, again, the balance, the struggling. My, my roommate was there for an MRS degree. So um, she was not as intent into school, so it was hard to have the self-discipline because nursing school is all business. We went, we went in a group. Like they, they didn't even know our names by the time our junior and senior year. They just kind of said, "There go the nursing students," you know, because mm -hmm. you do things differently than the average student. You go to clinicals early. You have long days. You have labs. You have lots of things that are a little bit unusual as compared to the um, to other majors in the program. So I think sometimes there was a some isolation in my program. They've done a lot better at that now, but I think the hardest part in nursing school is the perseverance. The um, You set these really high expectations and you realize those are not realistic, but you still want to strive for those sometimes, so keeping going and doing the right thing even when you don't feel like it. The studying, the and just being committed to what your goals on a daily basis, I think that can be the most challenging. Yeah, and I have to give nursing students a lot of credit. It definitely is a challenging curriculum, which I think it's definitely coming across between both of you that it is not an easy, easy path. It takes a lot of work, and to Rhonda's point, a lot of perseverance. So it could be scary you know, when, you want, when you go in and you want that 4.0, and then all of a sudden your expectations drop a bit more and a bit more and a bit more, and it could get really discouraging. Uh, I mean, I think we, 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 we did talk about this a little bit before, but Beth, is it, is it the same for you? Do you think that's the scariest part, or is it just, is it chemistry, or is it is it something else? I was afraid of patients. Really? So, <laughs> well, that's not good. I, when I walked in, when I went into the hospital, um, I remember taking my first blood pressure, and the hospital was a new environment for me. I'd never been in hospitals, and I had this notion that everybody in a hospital was really, really ill, on the brink of death, perhaps, mm. maybe from watching too much television. I really had no realistic sense. And so I went into a patient room to take a manual blood pressure, and I was so nervous that I put the cuff on his arm, and I put the stethoscope in my ears, and I started inflating the blood pressure cuff, and I put the diaphragm of the stethoscope on his chest over his heart. <laughs> Think about that. Oh, no. <laughs> and I pumped and pumped and couldn't hear a thing. I, I was, so, and we had practiced this in lab, but um, yeah, my nerves were really. It, 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 as soon as I became comfortable in the hospital setting, everything changed for me. I grew to love patients, love the connection, feel comfortable. The more confidence I got, uh, the better everything got. For sure. So for I, me, it was the hospital itself. It was yeah. the scariest part. Yeah, it's I can it understand was, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're you're taking all these classes and learning about the theory of it, and then you actually get into the and even you're practicing in class, but then you get to the to work with a real patient, and all of a sudden everything is completely different, and you, you start completely second guessing yourself. Completely different. Exactly. The first everything, the first surgery that I saw that I observed, I, I it was fantastic and terrible, and the first baby that I, that I witnessed that was born, it was awesome, and all the many, many firsts that you are privileged to see when you work in a hospital. Yeah, and for those of you uh, nurses that are also watching right now, as we do have a bunch of nursing students watching, so if you have any other thoughts about what the scariest part of nursing school is and what, you, what advice you would offer to them, I mean, definitely keep that dialogue going. And we, by the way, I mean, I also wanted to let everybody know that we, as we do have a lot of questions and I don't think we're going to get to all of them. I'm trying to keep a list of, of all these questions so we can get to them all, but I am going to be on Facebook Live right after this at about 9 o'clock, maybe a few minutes after 9 o'clock with one of our faculty members here 
at Kaplan, who's here with me in New York City, not in this exact room right now, but she will be at around 9 o'clock when she does get here. And we're going to be answering more questions live on Facebook. And for those of you who uh, don't know where to get to our Facebook page, if you look into the description below, again, you will see a link for facebook.com slash Kaplan NCLEX prep. And if you go over there and like the page, you will get a notification when we do go live. Um, or you can just go ahead uh, at the end of the broadcast and and click on that link, and I'll, I'll remind everybody then, and we'll we'll transition over to Facebook Live and take more questions there. Um, so definitely keep those questions coming in. Again, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, taking questions in the YouTube chat or on Twitter at uh, using the hashtag Kaplan Nurses Week or by tweeting at Kaplan NCLEX. Uh, and for those of you on allnurses.com, we're taking questions in there as well. So we've been doing, so we've had a lot of questions. We've been talking about nursing school. We've been talking about the scariest parts of nursing school and what it's like to be uh, you know, in nursing school and that first day as a nurse. So we're going to continue to progress and get a little bit deeper into the nursing profession. And my first question is for Beth as we start to dig a little bit deeper here. I know that, the, as we've said, the nursing profession is not an easy one. Uh, nursing school is not easy. Being a nurse is not easy. We give a lot of credit to those who decide to go into this profession and not to scare anybody off, but for anyone who's considering becoming a nurse or anyone who's already strapped themselves in and they're in nursing school, what do you find are some of the common struggles that a lot of nurses uh, face and what can nursing students expect? What are those hard days like? The, um, the difference between school and being a nurse on the job uh, is huge. And uh, that's one of the recognized gaps between education and, and the real world. And so you really are not prepared, not to, not to scare anybody. Uh, I think it's kind of well known, but having one or two or even three patients with an instructor, you are shielded from the real world quite a bit. So when you come into the work setting as a nurse, you begin to feel the actual responsibility. Um, I think one of the challenges, and that's why uh, picking a good facility with a very supportive residency program, as Rhonda said, is is all important. It's all important for you. Um, the challenges in nursing that I that I think are some of the most difficult is the intensity of the job, the complexity, the cognitive load that nurses experience and is not realized. And it's an added frustration that only nurses are going to get what I'm saying. The public really is, the public image of nursing and what we do is, is for whatever reason, it's um, not accurate, it's misdrewed. Um, the patient acuity is high and only getting higher. Hospital stays are very short now due to insurance and only very sick patients are admitted to the hospital. So the workload, the patient acuity, the intensity makes it all very, very challenging. Deeply rewarding. Um, as you said before, we all love it, but also very, very, very challenging. And that, again, is why I even said before that nurses are, by far, some of the most caring professionals I've ever met. So I give a tremendous amount of credit to those who decide to go into that career, a lot easier than what I do. Uh, Rhonda, is it, is the, how do you, what do you think? Are, are, are those the struggles that you see? Is there anything else that you see? I mean, what, what do you see are the common struggles in the nursing profession? I would agree with Beth that there is a big gap between when you leave school and when you actually start practicing and there is a huge difference between clinicals and real life but you know, there are programs to help you bridge that gap you do just have to be patient with yourself but I think another one of the struggles is, is that not everyone is nice hmm. not all patients were nice before they were sick not all nurses were nice before you worked with them and that's really something that you have to learn about conflict that it happens and our job is to remain professional I can remember when I first started there was one nurse who was particularly difficult on new nurses and we were all scared to death of her <laughs> and her tactic was she would not take report from you so you'd worked all night and you were counting the minutes till it was your time to be off shift and she would just delay giving report and I remember one day we just kind of linked arms and we said okay I've had it I'm going down I don't care if I go down in flames but I'm giving report so I sat down and I said Carol 
I am now going to give report if you would like to listen. And I just started talking, and my friends were all in the background like, she's going to die, she's going to die. And I was like, I can't take it anymore. But it finally, you know, when I did that, she looked at me, and she finally sat down, and she took report, and she started to treat me like another colleague. And it was a lesson that day for me to learn that you have to advocate for yourself and for mm -hmm. your patients, whether you're afraid or not. And I was terrified. But um, it came to the point where I thought, this is not right. And so you can't take it personal. You have to stay professional. You don't return evil for evil. But you do have to know who you are and be confident in that and advocate both for yourself in a professional manner and always advocate for your patients. It's definitely important, and I, I know that anyone who's watching who may one day, hopefully not, you know, have to be a patient is happy to hear that. You definitely want a nurse who's going to advocate for patients as much as possible. So when it comes to those dark moments, and there's definitely, I know there's probably nurses uh, watching right now who might be in a dark time, who are finding it's really tough to, to, to juggle these challenges, and any nursing student who, again, we don't want to freak anybody out. So, uh, Rhonda, what advice would you give to those who are either currently struggling in the nursing profession or those who are afraid of those, those common issues that come up? There's a couple things I would really want you to say, and first of all, I would echo what Beth said about self-compassion. Challenge those negative thoughts about yourself. When you find yourself saying, God, I always do that, or I messed this up, or challenge those thoughts, because all of us struggle, and all of us make mistakes. You're doing the best that you can. And I want to remind you about the power of yet. Um, I don't have this yet, and that's something we talk about a growth mindset, that that's okay. I'm learning. I'm, I'm going to get there with enough effort, and if I keep trying, I'm going to become like that nurse that I see that is so accomplished and knows what to do. No one starts that way, but you can get that way with effort and with applying yourself. And just remember, you're never a victim. You have choices. You have opportunities. You are not enslaved somewhere, so don't act like that. So be compassionate on yourself, and remember the power of yet. Yes, and that's definitely true. Nobody's going to know everything at any point. That's true for any profession, so you're right, the power of yet, knowing that you just don't know something yet. If you come across something you don't know, there's always an opportunity to learn, and those are the opportunities where you improve, you get better, you do, you do learn how to uh, you know, tackle those, those challenges that do come up. So I think we've been in the pits a little too long. We definitely want to, we're here to celebrate Nurses Week, so let's, let's bring it back to something positive. Beth, when it came to being a nurse, and this might either be from, so I know you've done a lot, you've, you've been a nurse, you've been mentoring nurses, uh, what would you say is your, what's your, what's one story you've come across either personally or through somebody else that has made you go, Wow, you know, I'm I'm really proud to be a nurse. It might be a tough question. A, I hope there's a, a lot great, of moments. It's <laughs> a great. There are. That's the blessing of nursing. It's just a rich, rich profession, in all the connections that you get to make with people who are strangers. And in in no other, very few other situations, do you come up to a complete stranger and you're able to hold their hand, to meet them when they're very vulnerable, to comfort them. One day I was working um, on telemetry. Mm. It's a cardiac floor. And when I got to work, they said, Beth, you're going to ICU today. You're, it's called floating. You're going to float to ICU. They're short. You go. Nobody likes to float. You leave mm -hmm. your friends, your comfort zone, and so on. So I went to ICU. And they gave me a patient who, I'm going to call him Mike. He was in his 30s. He had been in a severe car accident, and he was in a coma. He was on a respirator and unresponsive. There were a lot of people in the room. As soon as family, large, large family, um, on both sides, he had mother and a father that uh, I think they were divorced, so there was seemed to be two different family groups there. I, as soon as I heard report, I got it. He he had been on life support, and I knew without a doubt why I was there that day. It he needed to go. I I knew I was con I was convicted. He needed to pass. Um, he was you know, basically already gone, and I knew that I was going to make that happen. It's not an easy thing to do. It's very complicated when you have several doctors on the case, 
they all have to agree sometimes not they don't none of them want to make a decision it takes a great deal of coordination I had to call in um, a rabbi for one side of the family and a Catholic priest for another side of the family for emotional support. I had to coordinate with the organ procurement. I had there's an awful lot that goes into it, which was probably one of the reasons why he'd been hanging on so long because it it takes a lot of things have to come into place at the right time. But I knew that was the need of the family and his wife and his mother and father that were there. I just knew. And by the end of the day, everything was arranged, and everybody was ready, and they said what they needed to say. And before my shift was over, we were able to help him on his way and help the family. I have never forgotten that day because I feel that I was meant to be there and to do something that a, un a nurse is uniquely positioned to do. The doctors aren't. Resp a therapist is not, even the priest is not, they all have their part, but it took it takes nursing to coordinate that kind of thing. And we do that in big and small ways every single day. It may not be that dramatic. Um, I, at the very end, Mike um, was off the respirator and there's a bedside monitor. And the last thing that I did for his family was on the bedside monitor, his heartbeat was very erratic, which it gets towards the end. And I just quietly went up and turned it off because they were watching it yeah. still with hope because there's always hope. Even though the heartbeat meant nothing, it was just a random electrical activity, I knew that, they didn't know that. So I remember that was one of the last things I did for, the, for him. And that's, I, if we had 10 hours, I could talk for 10 hours about moments equally meaningful to me and where I hope that I made a difference. And that's just one of them. Well, I'm I'm getting a little teary eyed <laughs> just hearing about that, but I, I I hear you. There's definitely that's one of the great things about nursing is you have these the great thing and the and the not so great thing is you have all of these these stories that that as you said it's you were you were you felt like you were meant to be there on that day and you mm -hmm. had a great purpose and that's definitely a a very impactful story. Um, Rhonda, how about you? I mean, did you is there a moment that stands out for you in in your your experience as a nurse? Yeah, one of the more recent ones reminds me of when I was with nursing students, and that is always um, that's always a wild ride when you're in the hospital. You don't know what's going to happen, and when a code happens and you're in clinicals, that is very exciting. And um, this was a particularly sad case because this was a young mother. She was probably 26 and had a daughter, and she'd come in just because she thought she had some respiratory problems and ended up in the unit. And then all of a sudden, unexpectedly, she coded. And then they called the code, and they had done some testing that morning. And so the full code team responded, and when nursing students were in the hospital, their job was always compressions. They always get the highly technical things of doing the compressions. So I had about five nursing students that were just rotating through doing compressions. It was just the nursing team and the medical team in there. And during the code, um, could not did not was not very successful, continuing with the code, and um, results came back from the echo. And they had discovered that she was um, there was no way that she could survive. Her heart and lungs had gone through so much damage. Her lungs had become so fibrotic. The heart had been enlarged. There was nothing that they could do without a heart lung transplant, and there was no way she would be able to get that in the state that she was in. And it was a nurse who stood up and said, "It is time to bring the family in." So they went and they got the brothers and they got the husband and the family came in and we watched as the family started to, you know, they, they went through the whole, all the stages of grief right in front of us as the nursing students are doing compressions, the, the family's asking, can't you do something, please save her, she has a daughter, she's a single mother, you've got to save her. And the medical, I watched as the nurses would talk them through, like we've tried everything that we know to do, there's nothing that we can do and they're just so patient with it. Meanwhile, the nursing students are just tears streaming down their face as they file through. We watched this family when the older brother finally caught on and they had gone through all their options and things that they, they were asking the medical people to do. Then he said he went up to her and he said, you know what? The nurse came to him and they said, this is your chance to say goodbye. And so the brother went up and he, he said to her, don't worry, we'll take care of your daughter, we love you, we love her, you just go ahead and go, tell mom and dad that we love them. 
And then I watched as each brother, one by one, as those nursing students kept doing those chest compressions, just crying <laughs> as they're doing this, as we watched that family walk through that horrible time of the bargaining and the denial and the anger, and then finally the acceptance and saying their goodbyes, that we were part of that. And what Beth was talking about is nurses, you get the opportunity to intersect with people and in their lives in a time where they are in grief and they may never remember your name, but they will never forget what was done for them. And that's the beauty of nursing. Well, I think we all might need some Kleenex after those two stories, but uh, it's definitely, it's amazing how the moments that you're really proud to be a nurse are sometimes the also the saddest moments. Um, mm -hmm. this, it's a, it's amazing to to hear those stories, and it's it's sinking in with me now that that's that's just uh, it, again it, we're we're so proud of uh, all of our nurses out there, and uh, I really we we really admire the profession so much. So to any of you who are watching right now, again, sorry if we made you all teary eyed, but we want to know from you if you are a nurse right now, what is really uh, what's made you proud to be a nurse? And if you're a nursing student, what, what makes you proud to be a nursing student and to be entering this exciting and challenging profession? Um, and another reminder that we are, I'm, I'm seeing even more questions coming in, so I should probably direct my attention back to here and uh, take some more questions. And for those of you watching at home, there is still, there is still time to submit your questions. Even, we're, as I said, we're going to be transitioning over to Facebook at the top of the hour and taking more questions there. So feel free to, to and keep your questions coming in YouTube or allnurses.com or on Twitter using uh, the, the Twitter page at Kaplan NCLEX or the hashtag Kaplan Nurses Week. So putting it on a, uh, bring things up to a bit of a higher note, uh, Sophie asks, what is the best part of being a nurse? Rhonda, what do you have to say to that? The best part is the teamwork. I love working on a team, and it doesn't matter. Um, that's one thing I would advise when you're picking your unit. Look at how the people work together. That because there's you can do anything. There's nothing more. It just pumps you up when even if you have a busy shift, lots of things going on. When you work together with a solid team, there is nothing like it. So I think the best part of nursing is the teamwork. That's great. I am glad to hear there's good teamwork there. Beth, do you feel the same way, or what, what's the what do you think is the best part of being a nurse? Definitely, uh, definitely teamwork and being a, a part of the community of nursing. Mm. Uh, we we have a tribe, and just the fact that I'm a nurse, I'm feel like I'm friends with all nurses. Um, also, the connection. I would say the best part about being a nurse is the connection and the life lessons that it's taught me. I um, I get my energy from connecting one to one with people, and and those connections, especially when I feel like I was able to help somebody, that's the best part of nursing for me. That's great. Um, and that's a great question, Sophie. So thank you so much for submitting that. Um, looking at some other questions here, I guess we, uh, being a Kaplan, of course, we're going to get an NCLEX question one way or another, especially as we're talking about the nursing profession. So as Rhonda, since especially you are one of our Kaplan faculty, Paige asks, what is the single best advice you can give to pass the NCLEX on the first try, which I know everybody wants to do. That's right. Besides taking NCLEX Kaplan review, I had to say that first. I think the biggest. <laughs> I didn't ask her to can, say that. <laughs> that's right. I think the most important thing I see is if you will slow down and rip that question apart, the stem of the question, because you know um, I have a friend who's a hunter, and I don't often get asked to go hunting because um, first of all you have to be very quiet and you have to be patient. Not two of my fortes. <laughs> but he showed me a picture of a deer. He said, "Look for the deer, Rhonda," which I was somewhat offended because I. I grew up on highlights, find a picture things. Have you ever seen those? Where like you go to the doctor's oh, office yeah. and you would find the hidden pictures. I rocked those. <laughs> but then when he asked me to find the deer, alas, I could not find a deer. Until he said, Rhonda, look for the horizontal lines. And when I looked for the horizontal lines, I was like, there they are, there they are, there they are. So my reign was reestablished. But when you know what you're looking for, it'll pop up. And that's the best advice I can give you. If you can rip apart the stem of a question so you know what you're looking for before you look at those answer choices, they're going to be less likely to catch you on those distractors, those angry South Pole elves who write the NCLEX questions are meant to catch you on. So that's my best advice is take slow down, 
take your time and make sure you're asking yourself for this particular patient, this particular setting, what keeps them the safest. Rip that question apart so you know exactly what you're looking for. And you'll be less likely to get tripped up by those distractors in the bottom. That's great advice. And to also your point before, I mean, definitely taking a prep course is helpful. I'm not going to tell people to take Kaplan one way or another. We, of course, offer courses that are wonderful, but by far having the having someone to guide you through the whole process, no matter what you do to make that happen, is incredibly important. So definitely, as you are preparing for the NCLEX, make sure to have someone to guide you along the way, whether it's with Kaplan or with somebody else. Um, so a lot of great questions. I'm trying to look at a, a few others that are coming in on my list right now. Um, so for another question I see here is, uh, what does it take to be a nurse? In other words, like what are some of those common traits that you see from... Uh, of nurses who, who find a lot of success in their career. Um, so I guess, Beth, and just to reframe that question, so what, what, are, what are some of those common personality traits that I guess would make for a really successful nurse? What does it take to be a nurse? I think a lot of nurses are very down-to-earth. I think we're smart, down-to-earth people who like people, um, caring. You have to really enjoy helping people. Um, that feeds you, that you're uh, nurturing. Um, I, most, every nurse I know has a wicked sense of humor. So I, that's pretty common too. Very good sense of humor. And yeah, you do. And um, you're able to laugh at things and have perspectives. And then again, like I said earlier, we're all pretty determined people. I would say that. That's all very important. Um, mm -hmm. Another question I see here, and uh, this actually came up before and is a great question as well, which I will actually ask Rhonda. I just want to make sure I get to, to both of you. Um, so Rhonda, uh, folks here want to know, how can nurses juggle all of the, juggle a family life and, and tough hours at work, especially I guess when you have um, night shift hours for those who might have a family, might have, might have children. Um, you know, what are some things that those who are trying to balance work and family life, what are some of those things that those folks can do to remain committed both to their profession and to their family life? Um, stop comparing yourself and let go of perfectionism. Um, you're going to stumble in all areas and even if you could only focus on one tiny part of a role, we're all human and we get tired and we make decisions that might in retrospect not have been the best. But I would say stop comparing yourself to other people, get off of Facebook, that's the highlight reel of everyone's <laughs> life, stay away from that and just know that you're giving your very best in both your home and your work life and that's all that you can do. Well, it's funny you mentioned stay off of Facebook because, as I said, we are going to be transitioning. <laughs> Not the Kaplan Facebook. That's what I'm <laughs> They're going to be answering more questions there in about 10 minutes, and I can't believe we're actually getting really close to the top of the hour. So I'm going to, there's a lot of questions still here, and I'm going to save these. And for those of you who have submitted questions who we haven't gotten to yet, I will encourage you to come onto Facebook because I'm going to, as I said, have another Kaplan faculty member with me, and I'm going to be answering some of those questions and any other questions that come through. So thanks so much for, for continuing to continuing to, to send in those questions. Before we wrap up, though, I do have one more question for each of you to really kind of close things out. And that's specifically targeting our, our, speaking to our nursing students who are watching, because I know that that's probably the, uh, the number one group that's watching us right now. And I'll start with you, Rhonda. To all those nursing students who are out there watching, um, what advice do you want to lead for them, uh, lead for them as they begin their careers? And it's a big question, a very general question, but what advice would you leave for them? I give you three pieces of advice. I would say, first of all, don't hide your failure, failures. Um, ask when you feel unsure, and if something happens that you think is wrong, let people know so you can intervene and do something about it. The second piece is treat all of your patients like you would want somebody you really cared about to be treated. Whenever I see an elderly person, I think of how I'd want my dad, who's severely hearing impaired, to be treated or to be kind or to be patient with him. So treat every patient like you'd want somebody that you really cared about. So don't pick somebody who really irritates you in your family. Picture somebody that you really, really care about. And the third piece that I'd want to leave yourself with is every day ask yourself, how did this patient or this family have a better shift because I was their nurse? 
Well, that's wonderful advice, and I hear a lot of your uh, TED Talk and Prep Talk videos coming through as you're talking, so which I'm going to let students know in just a little bit how they can learn a little bit more about you and see your videos, Rhonda. Um, Beth, same question to you. What advice would you leave behind for those nursing students who are watching right now? You know, I love you guys. I just love new nurses. Um, you just have a wonderful energy, and I think I speak for a lot of nurses in the hospital when we say we love to see you coming. You have ideals and passion and commitment, and you bring in a fresh energy. Plus, I love this generation. You guys uh, really work together well and teamwork, the millennials, and you... One thing I really like is you are open to feedback, don't have a chip on your shoulder. You bring a lot of really wonderful qualities. Um, keep that, keep, keep in touch with what drove you to be a nurse. Uh, keep checking in with yourself. You will lose it if you lose yourself and you don't nurture yourself. So find out what it is to take care of yourself and you can keep that. Um, a real practical piece of advice, when you're new on the floor, find somebody that you trust, that you can talk to for reality testing. Is what I'm going through normal? Is this is it okay to speak up to somebody else like Rhonda shared earlier? Um, so you can learn those kind of things and, and help survive. Just reach out because we love to help you. <laughs> well, first of all, go Millennials, and thank you so much for uh, for that wonderful advice. And again, thank you to uh, everyone out there who has continued to send in your questions, and thank you everyone for attending. Just a few uh, reminders before we officially close out. As I said, I think probably 100 times, maybe 101 at this point, we are going to be answering more questions on Facebook Live right after this event in about five minutes or so, maybe a couple minutes after 9 o'clock. i got to grab my other faculty member, but if you click on the link below, it'll take you to the Facebook page when we're done, um, facebook.com slash Kaplan and Clex Prep, and if you like us there, it'll give you a notification when we do go live, and we will continue to answer questions there. I want to thank allnurses.com again for helping us and sponsoring this event and for providing us with um, Nurse Beth uh, to begin with. It is great to have you here, and Rhonda, of course, such a great pleasure to have you uh, here as well. And as I said, Rhonda ha does, ha does have several videos out there on, between TED Talks, and uh, we've done a few at Kaplan Call, we call Prep Talks, which you can find on the uh, Kaplan YouTube page. So if you subscribe to us or just go into the Kaplan YouTube page, you can check out some of Rhonda's videos. It's great, especially for nursing students, as we talk through some of those challenges in nursing school and beginning to prepare for the NCLEX. And for Nurse Beth, you can check her out at allnurses.com. She does have an advice column, um, which is a lot like a, a Dear Abby, which I know that, uh, Beth, you've told me mm -hmm. on the side that you've always wanted to be a Dear Abby and had that, had that dream <laughs> of being like her. Yeah. So it's great to see that you are really doing that, living that dream and, and helping students in the in the nursing world and even nurses that are in the nursing world right now. Um, and the last reminder I have is that we do have some other free events coming up this week which you can sign up for at captest.com slash nursesweek. That's K-A-P-T-E-S-T dot com slash nursesweek or just click the link below. And there's a few, we have a, an NCLEX or in practice test, we have a critical thinking seminar, and a sample class that's coming up over the next three days. So make sure you register. You can do those either live or on demand if those times don't work out well for you. Um, so thank you so much again to everyone who is watching. And we'll be going, I'm going to go over to Facebook in just a few minutes. Um, thank you so much, Beth and Rana, for joining us. It is great to have you, you here. And this mm -hmm. is wonderful. I hope you all have an enjoyable rest of your Nurses Week. Happy Nurses Week, and take care, everybody.